Hello, it's Darren Moore, and this is the How to Survive Your Police Career podcast. Today, I'm going to explain how, when you're stressed up to your eyeballs because of overwork or a griefy incident, or because some idiot's just done a perfect job of winding you up, you can calm yourself down, lower that blood pressure, and avoid punching someone through nothing more than a bit of deep breathing. And here's how you do it. Firstly, ideally, get yourself somewhere quiet where you can sit down. It's best if you do sit down because this technique can make you a bit lightheaded as it's lowering that blood pressure, which is a good thing, of course. So find a quiet office, maybe, or perhaps your station has even got one of those quiet rooms designed for this kind of stuff. Although you might have to kick someone out who's trying to have a doze in there, I suppose. You can even do it in the patrol car straight after an incident, as long as you're away from people staring at you or wanting to report some minor crime from three weeks ago. But remember what I say about becoming lightheaded. Make sure you've got your wits about you before you drive off afterwards. And certainly don't do this technique when you are driving. Do I need to say that? But wherever you find yourself sitting, this is the technique. I'll quickly explain it and then we we'll go through it together. So to begin with, listen very carefully to your breathing. Now encourage that breathing to slow down. Once it has steadied, you're breathing slowly through your nose for a count of three, but you channel that breath into your tummy as opposed to your chest. As if you're trying to encourage a small balloon to expand in your stomach. You want your tummy to expand instead of your chest. And then you breathe out through your mouth as opposed to your nose for a count of five. So longer than the inhale. And then you just carry on doing that for a minute or two while listening to your breathing. It's as simple as that. Let's give it a go, shall we? So listen very carefully to your breathing. Now encourage that breathing to slow down. Inhale through your nose for a count of three. So that's one, two, three. I don't know why I feel the need to teach you to count. Now breathe out through your mouth for a count of five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then just carry on doing this while listening to your breathing. Easy, isn't it? And trust me, it's really effective. Let's go through it again, just so you've got it locked into your mind. You're not driving, are you? So listen very carefully to your breathing. Now encourage that breathing to slow down. Inhale through your nose for a count of three. So that's one, two, three. Now breathe out through your mouth for a count of five. So that's one, two, three, four, five and then just carry on doing this while listening to your breathing. As you become better at it, you can increase the length of time breathing in and out. But the important thing is that the in-breath should always be shorter than the out-breath. And remember that you're filling up that balloon in your tummy as opposed to your chest. Another variation is breathing in slowly for four seconds, holding your breath for four, and then breathing out slowly for four. Sometimes I find it good to alternate between these methods because it makes me concentrate more. Again, you might feel lightheaded when you finish, but don't worry as this is entirely natural. The joy of this technique is that it's so easy. It's just modified breathing, really. And although I talk about finding a quiet space, there's nothing to stop you doing it in plain sight, really. If you find yourself getting stressed up in the office because of your case files or something, just do it discreetly while you're staring at the screen, perhaps. When I was covering custody as a skipper, and I used to hate custody, I used to do it while even standing at the custody desk. Nobody noticed. And it's a great technique for after work as well. When you've driven home and switched the engine off, take a minute or so while sitting in the car seat just to calm yourself down with some deep breathing. Get yourself together before walking in through that front door. Think of this deep breathing as like a little buffer zone between work and home. 
although you might find as much mayhem when you do get home. It also works brilliantly when you can't sleep because you're too wound up by grief at work. In fact, it's one of the techniques I describe in another podcast on the website called, with a lot of imagination on my part, I Can't Sleep. Check it out if that's an issue for you. Anyhow, I hope this deep breathing works for you. I always thought it was a bit hippy-dippy until I tried it, but now I'm a true convert. But anyway, thanks for listening. Check out the website, howtosurviveyourpolicecareer.com for other articles and podcasts on police health and welfare, and of course, details on my books in the Police How to Survive series. Yeah, this is the sales bit, because the books pay for the podcasts. So, what have we got? Well, we've got the main health book for Bobbies, How to Survive Your Police Career. Everything an officer needs to know about eating and sleeping around shifts, mental and physical health, how to avoid infection and injury, how to recover from injury, cancer, diabetes, female health, eyesight, ethnic health, fire and water safety, SDIs, I suppose we'd better cover them, and even teeth care. Avoid those big dental bills as you get older, and loads, loads more. It's an easy read with a lot of humour. And we've also got the one for new officers, how to survive your early years as a police officer, loads of information and tips to avoid too many disasters in those early years. And the one for your partners, how to survive your relationship with a police officer. Loads of practical advice for keeping your relationship on track, even though one of you is doing the most bizarre job in the world. And remember that we're always keen to work with any police services, federations, or other organisations that would like to buy the books on licence. Maybe downloading the books to your troops' work phones so they can access this information whenever they want. Or we could produce podcasts on particular subjects if you wish. Anything's possible, just give us a call. But anyhow, that's enough for today. Please like and share this podcast and do all those other social media things you're supposed to do. Thanks again for listening. And to all police officers out there, stay safe and be lucky. Bye-bye.